like Batman and Joker, Prime and Megatron, and Holmes and Moriarty, T-Rex must have a Triceratops. Even from the very beginning when I started with Carnegie, I knew it was a priority to get both. My very first sideshow statue, continuing with Wild Safari, then Pianesso. This was a couple locked in an eternal adversarial struggle. Almost exactly a year ago, I reviewed the Wonder Artistic Models Deluxe T-Rex. These models are upgraded versions of the wood kits some of us had as children. They were a very formative part of my childhood, contributing to my love of dinosaurs. The Wham models are the same idea, but on steroids and way more advanced for the real dinosaur enthusiast. At that time, I was stunned with what Wonder's creator, Simon Alvarez, was able to do to recreate the three-dimensionality of that animal. I was waiting for the inevitable deluxe Triceratops, and today, we have it. Now, just for fun, context and nostalgia, I managed to get a copy of the original Triceratops design. As you can see, these kits come in wooden templates with stamped pieces you push out. And what you do is you join them by pairing numbers. For example, we have a 1, so we look for the corresponding one and then join them. As you can see, it's just two templates with a few pieces and a completed model looks like this. It's simple, but it's really nice how it still indicates some features, such as these epoxipitals and of course the three horns. So much for a warm-up. Now let's put this aside and look at what we have today. You can see this is really thick, solid, and it's 312 pieces. You can already see from the horns, it's going to be complex. Now behind, it pegs the difficulty to expert level. Now, this thing is hefty. The whole block weighs 909 grams or two pounds. Removing the sleeve, you have the welcome note with some introductory information, including a QR code that links to tutorials. And here are even the WAM seals. The whole presentation is really quality, including the paper. Everything is recyclable. As with the previous models, there's a nice booklet that comes with it. It's bilingual in English and Spanish. The art is really pleasing, as is the quality of the paper. And there's actually good information about Triceratops itself. And also included these instructions for the trickier bits. The kit consists of 12 templates for a total of 312 pieces from A to L. And as always, extras of more fragile pieces are included. Now here's something new in the way the instructions are laid out. Previous models had their numbers printed directly on the pieces themselves. Now I like that because it was so ergonomic to just follow the flow of the pieces. However, many people didn't like it. So what Wonder Artistic Models has done now is to include separate guides like this so the wood can be unmarked. Once you get used to them, it's just as easy to refer to and even quicker to get an overview. These red marks tell you that this area is fragile, so be careful. Like my other Wonder Artistic Models reviews, I won't give you a walkthrough. Wonder Artistic Models has walkthroughs on their YouTube channel which I'll link to below. I will give you some tips for the parts I found challenging, but this time I'll put those at the very end because I realised that putting them in front of the video takes away from reviewing the model itself. So let's get to it. As you can see, the overall form and proportions are very solidly Triceratops. The compact and robust form and that impressive head is as it should be. Triceratops has been estimated to be up to 9 meters or 29.5 feet long. This model is 45 centimeters or 17.7 inches long and putting it nicely at 1 to 20 a scale. If you're a fan of anatomy, there are many points to appreciate, not just in the form but how three dimensionality is created. And here are some highlights. Let's start from the rear end this time. Firstly, the appropriately short tail articulates somewhat through these joints. And up here, 
where it would hardly be noticed, a vertebral bodies to lend it some volume. Now higher up, we get the hip structure. The form of this is just beautiful. Now they're able to get the curvature here of the ilium through a series of clever cuts that gives the wood flexibility, then connect it to a wooden form to anchor it. From above, you can see the form follows closely to the skeletal. Here, the formation of the acetabulum, bound by the appropriately curved ischium here, and the pubis anteriorly. The pubis even has a spur which I'd completely forgotten about. Then we get to the very robust hind limbs. Now first, the thigh. You can see the buildup of volume by differently shaped flat pieces to create a contouring effect. This may best be appreciated from the front, where you can see the outward flaring of the femoral condyles. Including this teardrop here. You see the template here of the tie. Um, every layer is slightly different so that when built up, you get unevenness across each angle. You even see the slightest suggestion of this bump here. Here's a quiz for you. What's this called? Tell me in the comments below. I'll just note that this structure is prominent in more basal ceratopsians and then gets very much reduced in triceratops, as is reflected here. And what about the leg? Well, look at how many pieces goes into shaping both the characteristic shape of the tibia, including the tibial tuberosities. With this little teardrop here to cap things off. Here's another teardrop here to give the front of the fibula three-dimensional form. And from the back, now look at this extra plate to give us a smooth appearance of a real bone. You can see uh, from the template how closely the characteristic shape of the tibia is captured here. The feet have the right number of digits and the proportions are very pleasing, including even this little spur-like vestigial digit 5. Now let's look at the right side now, where you can appreciate the flex and imagine the forces transmitted through the leg as it not just supports but propels the animal forward during heel off. Again, all the rounded protuberances are shaped. The femoral condyles, the form of the tibia, distal end of the fibula. Just really like the little teardrops here and here. Every major angle, effort has been made to convey the illusion of roundedness, and this story is repeated everywhere else in the model. Moving up, we can see the rib cage, the kind of triangular shape to it seen from the side. But what we don't see is the fact that these transverse processes up here are actually designed such that you angle them upwards. Now, if you can't see them, what's the point? How about verisimilitude and the integrity to the actual fossil? As the saying goes, integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching. Up here in the neck, uh, you can see the orientation of the cervical ribs angulate in the correct caudoventral orientation. And down here we have the gastralia, which Wonder Artistic models included even in their first dinosaur offerings, and a feature we sometimes forget that dinosaurs had. And here we're even trying to recreate the connections to the distal tips of the ribs. Now I'll have to adjust these on the right again later, 
uh, but on the left you can see where I was a bit more competent and actually got them to coincide. Now, one of my favourite parts of Ceratopsian anatomy are the upper limbs. It's hardly a surprise that the robustness of the entire structure is captured, just like in the hind limbs. And just like in the hind limbs, the condyles are recreated. And from the front, you can appreciate the powerfully thick and crazy shape of the humerus with this very wide blade here. The radius and ulna are equally thick. And in the same way, three-dimensionality is built up with differently shaped pieces. Now if we rotate to the back again, you can observe the rounded condyles and also the very pronounced olecranon to which powerful triceps no doubt attached. Then we come to the manus, and there's just so much to say, but I'll limit myself to saying that the all-important finger proportions are there. You have the two non-weight-bearing lateral digits. And then you have the foundations right here, digits 1 to 3. And the way this splays out, you really get the idea of the entire chain from scapula down to the toes. I was really delighted to see this arc of metacouples created here, and even more pleasurable to actually build. On the right side, you see the same attention to detail. In this position, you can really appreciate the non-participation of digits 4 and 5 during locomotion. And finally, we get to the pièce de résistance, the head. Now I've remarked on the amazing three-dimensionality of the deluxe T-Rex skull. Uh, for example, creating the forward-facing eyes for stereoscopic vision and the flare of the maxilla. Now when it comes to ceratopsians, the difficulties are even more numerous, particularly because of the curved surfaces of the frill in multiple planes. And I'm delighted to see just how Simon surmounted it. There are separate surfaces for the parietals and the squamosals, each with its own curvature. And in so doing, this really has maximized the three-dimensional representation that can be created you using here flat the separate pieces. curved planes of both the squamosals as well as the parietals. Of course, we should credit the attention to detail some highlights are the squamosal being more triangular, which is generally accepted to be the case for chasmosaurines versus the slightly more uniform shape in centrosaurines. And if you even bothered to form uh, with these two parietals coming together, that characteristic midline epiparietal P0, it would have been so easy to just have these epiparietals paired and avoid the split here and hope that no one would notice, but no such slackness to accuracy here. It's of course impossible to recreate every structure, but where possible, hints of them are included. Now even in the humble nasal region, you see the characteristically huge narial, and within, you see the triangular process and also the nerial strut here, which helps define the premaxillary fossa. And all this in just this one unsexy area. And you see also this piece here, not just to bulk up the mandible, but cut in such a way as to create that buccal imagination, which suggests some kind of cheek structure in onetitians. Within that is the battery of teeth. And from the front here, you can see the flaring of the jugal bones. And then up here, the way the sclerotic rings are created. Then of course, the three horns for which Triceratops is named. You have the enjoyment here of attaching many, many ovoid discs to the bone core, so to speak 
to actually create bulk in the horns and get a more correct cross-sectional area, instead of just a more quadrilateral cross-sectional area. So yet another problem with creating volume with flat surfaces is overcome. Also, you have some freedom in angulating the brow horns here. And while it's recommended to spread them laterally, you can tweak that to your own preference. Finally, let's talk about the pose. Now, this is a very dynamic one, and you can imagine it either mid-stride or pawing the ground with significant warning. The ceratopsian legs are captured very nicely and gives you a feeling of ponderosity and strength. The tail is posable, as I've said, but the main money comes from the adjustability of the head. You can swivel the head from side to side. Which is really nice in itself. But in addition, by changing this here, you have another dimension of posability, creating different moods and scenes. Such as making it look like a tossing bull meeting a would-be predator with the warning flashes that display would engender. But you could also have it facing down, about to initiate a charge. or simply a more neutral position. With this versatility, you're almost guaranteed to find the pose that you like. But here's the final pose I've decided on. Head down and turn to one side. Quietly dangerous in preparation to meet this. T-Rex, the perpetual partner in dioramas that will last till the end of time. They don't really scale well together, uh, but given the complexity of the Triceratop design, if they printed it smaller, you wouldn't be able to grasp all the smallest pieces. But when I look at the wonder of the engineering, the three-dimensionality of form, and how wonderfully the skeletal structure is captured for both of these, and simply the shared aesthetics, it's easy enough for me to overlook. And by the way, here's a little bonus. The Wonder Artistic Model's Juvenile Triceratops. You can see that this is a much simpler model. In fact, it's only 37 pieces on two smaller templates. And well suited for newcomers to the hobby or for children. But they go well together, and I always like dioramas. And here it looks like the adult is protecting the baby from a would-be predator. Now this has been really fun to build, and like the other models, gave me hours of joy and therapeutic relaxation. But another bonus has been to improve my anatomy as I build each dinosaur, especially areas I've neglected. For example, while I'm excited about the maintenance of Triceratops, when building the hip area, for example, I got to know the shape of the various bones better. And likewise, if you're building the arm, you'll become more than passingly familiar with the shape of the scapula, the humerus, and the proportions of the fingers. You know, there's something very different with actually holding and handling real pieces that solidifies things for you, compared to just noting it in passing on a skeletal picture. That's very valuable. And if you're interested in learning about gross anatomy, building this will, I think, facilitate that. It's delightful to see Wonder Artistic Models keep up with their standard of an it's wonder it's delightful. It's delightful to see Wonder Artistic Models keep up their standard of engineering and come up with a design worthy of the Triceratops. I understand from Simon that plenty of thought went into creating solutions for some of these three-dimensional representations, especially the multifaceted curved planes. 
I think you can see that in this deluxe Triceratops, they've succeeded in this most famously. So that's it for this model. Uh, do check out their other models, and I think you'll find that even just one of these will add another dimension to your collection, besides being really fun and also improving your anatomy. I'll see you soon with another review.